Welcome back to Dragon Quest XI, where in this episode we are finally going off to Tickington to do some of the kind of older quests, the kind of throwback quests. So as you can see, I've reset everything since the last episode, there's no mods that have carried over. Before we go back to Tickington, we need to find the remaining Tuckles. So if we have a look, first one is in Sniffleheim Castle, so let's head off. There he is, <laughs> finally. I thought I'd missed it, because I thought there was one down in the dungeon bit that I'd got recently, but didn't show up for some reason. But no, there it is, Room of Revival. Uh, oh, with the Undecipher. That must be Dragon Quest X, I think, the Undecipher one, because that was the one that never made it to the west. There we go, first one down. Let's keep going. There he is, tucked away in Arborea. What have you got for me? Really, all I want is Dragon Quest Eight and Nine quests, but pre Pantry. Not sure what that game's from, four or five, maybe? Oh, there he is, in the tiniest little tucked away corner of Insular Algora. Nice silvery one as well. I really want to get that as a desk ornament to go with my Liquid Melt slime. Oh, there we go, Ruby Path of Doom. That is a Dragon Quest Nine Grotto map, I believe. What the fuck is that one going to be? <laughs> Surely I've been everywhere now. I can't be in the battleground, maybe? I think it might be now that I've said that. Oh, this must be it. First Forest Railway Station. If we check the info... Yeah, there we go. Right, let's have a look. Remember these guys. I'm pretty sure they drop or have a steal of either A-Gates or Uber A-Gates. And <laughs> there we go. I think you need to farm them for some of the later items, which we may do, may not, but there's the toggle we're after. What's he got for me? Go on, give me a Dragon Quest 8 quest. That's what I really want. Hidden Valley, Ultra the Chosen. Dragon Quest 6? Not sure, don't know. <laughs> I only just noticed this detail. This one's in Cobblestone. Obviously now that me and Gemma are living together, Amber is staying here in Gemma's house instead, which is just a, a bizarre way of doing things. But anyway, there's the toggle. Let's see what you got for me. Go on, Dragon Quest 8, Dragon Quest 8. Yes, Trollane Castle. Beautiful. As he's sitting on a bench behind the ultimate key door. Am I blind? Oh my god, I am blind. There he is. It blends in so well, that one. I can't believe I didn't see that. But there we go. Uh, that is... Okay, that must be Dragon Quest X again, I think. Alter the Undeciphered. Right, a couple more and we're done. Oh, a chunk of Oracalcum. So, there must be a finite number of Oracalcum compared to what I was saying last time, but... There we go, there's the final topple. Bit easier to find this one as well. And then the final one. I can't remember what one we're missing, to be honest. Tangent Old Castle. That might be Dragon Quest 1. Not quite sure. But with that, I think we have everything we need. So now we can head off to Tickington and complete the quest. There he is, the bowtie top himself. <laughs> oh, tickle the top of the guy. <laughs> I'd forgotten his name for a second. Here we go. And we're in. There we go. I've literally not back, been back to this place since the very start of the game when he first go in. But it's a nice touch that everyone still gets the... Oh, this interface is so weird. It's so classic. Like, it's done well in the sense that it's meant to be classic, but it is weird. And it is nice that everyone gets their outfits as well. I presume they've got the, like, set... Am I choosing... Oh, right, I'm picking my lineup. Uh, let's go normal lots. Oh, and Hendrix Scott. Is that his golden one, or is that his... No, that's his red one. That's the Justin one. Yeah, it's a nice touch, but yes, oh, that, I mean, that font is so, cla is that Times New Roman? It just looks so <laughs> classic and old. Oh, that sound effect as well. I mean, these new kind of, hmm, interesting. I've never really spoken to kind of these tuckles, but yeah, that sound effect is so classic, so old. I've just chatted to everyone now, why not? We should probably get on with the quest. Oh, actually, let's talk to the party as well, see what they've got to say. I'm sure, time for those, okay. Yeah, again, I mean, I've said it a hundred times in this playthrough already, but I think the mystery of the topples in the non-definitive version of the game is better than the reveal here. Because I think it just kind of... Oh, in my first playthrough of this game, I spent so much time wondering, like... So desperately wondering what the tockles were and what the black and red tockle was and the significance of that. It's kind of the pub and chat to them. But I think this game just kind of gives away the secret too early, the definitive version. Echo Chamber. Hero of the Owl. I mean, they're big fans of the Luminary. Let's get to the last one. And then... <laughs> I can't remember which tockle is which. I don't know who it is. But... Right, this is the most annoying thing in the world. I'm going to spoil it straight away. 
you can never see what's behind this red tuckle. You can never get behind there. Even if you finish the whole thing, there's... He just can't do anything. It's the most infuriating fucking thing, because they've clearly designed it with the intention of it being something, and then just thought, nah, why bother? I see you can just never go back there. It's a secret that will never be solved. Oh, I like this thing. This one's nice. Right, we just chat to these guys. But, I mean, we should have unlocked everything now. There is a proper order in which to do this, but I don't know it, and I can't be bothered to look it up. So we are just going to start from Dragon Quest 1 quests and go through them. And deviate when we have to. So again, the only Dragon Quest games I've played are 7, 8, 9, and 11. Yeah, this is a classic theme, isn't it? Oh, we've got random encounters as well. <laughs> oh, this is so classic. Like, I'm playing this on a 75-inch 4K screen, 120 hertz. This doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> I've got, has Eric got... Yeah, Eric's got boomerangs. Should take them both out. Oh, it's so slow as well. Oh, this is so weird. Like... It's a nice sort of retro forever. I've only done this, that whole set of quests once before. I must have a spell. Yeah, there we go. And, like, it is a nice throwbacky thing, but... I kind of wish they did it all in the same style as Dragon Quest XI. I know that would have been quite a big undertaking. This is obviously much easier to code, because it is just a PNG. I think I don't really know how it works, but... Yeah, I'm sort of always of the opinion that a game should be made with the best graphics it possibly can be. Upscaled and enhanced and all of that. But, yeah. It's a nice throwback, but I think with as many quests as there are in... I forgot that little door. As many quests as there are in this game for the old things. I think the throwback element of it just kind of gets too repetitive, I think. Yeah, that's something the, the um, Dragon Quest XI fixes as well. Monsters that have a different look in the overworld compared to what they do when you actually fight them. Because, um, Dragon Quest IX, thinking of that one. I mean, monsters don't have much health here. I think it's the, um, the getting them soldiers. They're soldiers in the overworld, and then you fight them, and then they're monsters, and it just doesn't make any sense. Right, I think we've done that quest now, so let's wrap this one up. Let's see what else is in store. <laughs> I'm not following the dialogue of this, to be honest. So have we now fixed this one, or is there more to do here? Some random bit of land. See, this is what um, modern games do a lot better than old games. But old games, there's just like so many like... I mean, I'll take Kingdom Hearts 1 as the most recent example. It's like, you have to do such a specific thing to progress, and it's not at all clear. Like, the story does not spell it out for you at all. And like, the only way you're going to progress is to like, randomly find it somewhere. And it's just so stupid. I'm happy games, for the most part, don't do that anymore. I mean, Kingdom Hearts 1 compared to 2 is like the best example you're going to get of that. Because Kingdom Hearts 2 makes sense where you have to go next, at least most of the time. Whereas Kingdom Hearts 1 just sets you... It sets you off in a random place that you don't know anything about, and then you just kind of have to work it out yourself. I think I'm thinking of the uh, Atlantica in particular, where the way to progress in that is to use a fire spell on a random rock somewhere and then grab onto a dolphin and it's just like it's not clear at all but yeah unfortunately there's a lot of that in old games glad it's not there anymore <laughs> it's interesting how it looks there we go we got him but yeah it's nice that they've coded that kind of i don't know if surely they didn't do that for every ability or is that just something that's easy to code relatively speaking like a new animation in this kind of way i don't know but <laughs> it's a nice little touch i think oh everyone's disappeared from this town now <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't know anything about Dragon Quest 1 at all. From what I have... From what I do know about Dragon Quest 8 and 9 and a little bit of 7, these quests are like... They're not specifically part of the story of the game, they're in their like little additions, so... I mean, the bits I played of the quests in 8 and 9 from what I remember kind of... kind of made sense, but... I think they only made sense given the context of... you'd played the game before. I recognise this theme. I've definitely heard the orchestral version before. That's uh, Dragon Quest relaxing music video that has done wonders for my work rate over the years. That's definitely this one. I'm going to resort to googling already because I don't know the answer to this one. So this one I screwed up my plans a little bit because apparently you have to beat Kalasmos to get the item for that game and I was planning on doing all of this before Kalasmos so I think I might do that off camera and then finish this and then do Kalasmos on camera <laughs> next time. That's really throwing me off that ass but 
Now we'll continue on to the Dragon Quest 2 quest now. That's really annoyed me. Well, a, a human. I, this just reminds me of the stupid rough thing in Dragon Quest 7, where one of your party members is a half dog, half human. It's so stupid. And that comes, I think, just after or just before you lose one of the actually interesting characters, who is Kiefer, who just disappears and never comes back. And, like, it's so stupid. But that's what it is. I'm not a fan of Dragon Quest 7 at all. Oh, God. Is this the one that... Oh, I think it is. This is the really stupid one that, like... I, this is classic gaming, isn't it? It's just such a stupid cave that... Oh, Uberego, though. Such a stupid cave that just makes no sense, and you just have to randomly guess which one it is, and then if you get it wrong once, you go back right to the start, and... Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm following it. Alright, let's do it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Utterly stupid. I remember spending hours on this trying to do it properly, but I'm just going to Google it this time, because I can't be bothered. It's bits like this. Like, you literally just have to guess which one of these however many paths is correct. And the game gives you absolutely nothing to go on whatsoever. I've Googled this, I don't know what it is, but it's so stupid. I'm so happy modern games don't do this nonsense anymore. Did that really just happen? Have I just been sent back to the fucking start? Oh, I hate this bullshit. This is the stupidest bit, yeah. You've literally just... I'm not even going to try and copy the <laughs> how the tutorials done it. Yeah, there you go. It's so stupid. Like, I don't really understand why they put this in Dragon Quest XI. Because surely this part of the game would have got so many complaints. I mean, it's Dragon Quest II, which is 1988, I think. Uh, this just would... Just why? <laughs> I have no other questions, but I've done it again. Oh, it's so stupid. Fucking hell. This is just... I mean, the repetitiveness of the music just makes this even more infuriating. It's just so stupid. This time... Yeah, there we go. Oh, now what? Oh, here we are, finally. Right, that was the stupidest bit of gaming I've done in years. Oh, I do not like this. <laughs> oh, we haven't got to go all the way back through, have we? Oh, for God's sake. Oh, fucking hell. I don't like it. Can we evoke? I think we can. Yes, there we go. Right, get me out of this stupid place. Oh, I've just remembered this one. It's Baromoss' castle and it's literally just as bad as the one I just did. Oh, I hate this. Oh, hello. This is the song from the, uh... Where we did the, uh, Angry Large Trials, I think. This must be the... This is Dragon Quest 3, isn't it, Baromoss? So, this must be where it comes from. But even this song is annoying me now. <laughs> that is just such a stupid and repetitive part of the game. Even songs I've previously enjoyed, I do not like anymore. Done. Pull me out of this. Oh fuck off, we gotta go back again. Oh, what am I doing with my life? I went to the gym earlier, I had a lovely swim. Now I'm sitting here doing this bullshit. Right, let's fight this one. This is a demon in the overworld, and now... What the fuck is that? All this episode does is remind us how stupid Dragon Quest games used to be. Here we go, can we just fight Baramos? Here we go, right. Oh, we get Baramos's theme as well. That's kind of cool, I guess, but <laughs> it's still shit. Oh, that was an <laughs> anticlimactic. I had a much better showdown with Baramos in Dragon Quest IX, but... Oh, dear. Right, let me get out of here. Oh, this is... Right, I don't like the look of this place already, but I recognise this theme. This is the theme of um Eric's little place in Act 2, when he was um trapped in the prison. Uh, yes, <laughs> this has pissed me off already though. There's gonna the next room is just gonna be yeah, I know it. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I wouldn't be bothered to look at the arrows and work it out. YouTube it again. Um, let me finish this stupid quest. I'm actually interested by this one, because I know Sorrow is the final boss of Dragon Quest 4. I think a lot of these quests speak about him as if he's like a someone getting married or something. I don't know. He, maybe he was a guy beforehand, but I don't really know what the fuck's going on. I'm gonna play them all eventually, but not yet. Oh, this is so much better. Feels like a completely different game to be out here in the open world, not in that shitty little place. But I've only come out to make a thing in the forge, so we've got to go straight back in, but I don't want to. Oh, is this gonna be another. Oh, fucking hell. It's another stupid, bullshit, classic gaming nonsense. Fuck. But right, Veronica's guiding us now. Don't know why she can. She can see magic stuff, but. There we go. First actually bit of interesting gaming is when they actually get the characters of Dragon Quest XI involved. 
This is another one of those classic gaming bullshit things. I've googled this one because there's no idea, no way I ever would have worked it out. But you have to run around here until you get a certain level of creatures and then you have to kill them. It just makes no sense. Why would anyone in their right mind think of this as the solution? Just naturally. Just, just bullshit. And now we've got the magic branch that solves the quest. <laughs> like, it makes no sense. Yeah, I think with that one done, we've now finished Dragon Quest 4, I think. Yeah, there we go. Oh. It's taking his time, this one. Oh, lovely. They're sending me the quest this rest from Dragon Quest 9. It's the only place out of all of these places I actually want to go. I remember this in Dragon Quest 9. There's an old man who wants to be a bunny girl every time. <laughs> but maybe this is the origin of it. This is Dragon Quest 6, I think. So, fuck knows what's going on. But I remember how annoying it was in Dragon Quest 7 because I was about to change vocation and they just. They send you into a whole world of hell. Well, is this the thing? There we go. I mean, it's just nice to be back in Erdre and not the bullshit that is Tickington. What is the point of this? That theme is genuinely going to drive me fucking mental. <laughs> Are we through? Oh no, there's more. Oh, wonderful. Oh my god, there's more. Why did my... Why? Why? And... Oh look, more. I move one inch. This is such AIDS. I remember this place from Dragon Quest 7, and I remember it being fucking horrible then. Why have they at every opportunity put in, like, the worst parts of each game into these quests? Like, there's... I mean, there's some decent bits in 7, even though it's not my favourite game, but this is just shit. All builds up to this fight, which is probably going to be over in about three turns. If that. Oh, it's a done. <laughs> One turn. What was the point? Oh, back to the fucking Rainbow Mons. Why? Why? This is unparalleled AIDS. Oh, what do we have to do now? Oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> it's the worst part of the game, and they make you go through it twice. Oh, I just can't be fucked. Oh, I really just can't be asked to even work this out. I've probably fucked it already by doing that. Oh my god. Right, where the fuck is he? Please don't tell me I've just done all that pointlessly. Where is Kiefer? Why? Oh, there he is. Thank fuck for that. Oh, do I have to fucking hell, man? Can you not just cast Zoom or Evac or something? Just get yourself out of this one. Oh, fuck that. I'm Googling it. Oh, and I fucked it again. Oh, I can't be bothered. I'm not even happy at this point. I just want it to be over. And Dragon Quest Seven is done. Don't want to exaggerate, but that was the worst few hours of my life. Really? Do we have to go through this again? <laughs> fucking hell. Fucking hell, this is like one small flavour. Honestly, it genuinely feels like they went to great effort to make this the worst experience he can possibly have. Literally, this is just the worst parts of every Dragon Quest game rolled into one stupid quest line. What is the point of this? Right, at least we actually go to what is hopefully a nice little memory now. So we're finally into the games I love, which are Dragon Quest 8 and 9. And we are in Chateau Felix. Oh, it's just like I remember. Oh, it's Tom. Do we have to do the quiz? No, there's fuck all here for us to do. We're sent straight out. Oh, what is this bullshit? Yeah, I prefer this place in 3D. I'm not gonna lie. It's Medea's bedroom with the piano there and everything. What a beautiful place. If it wasn't such 2D bullshitness. Right, oh here we go. It's the magic circle where Dormagus takes the scepter. I'd be so happy to see this place if it wasn't... So shit in 2D. Honestly, I just taken even the good parts of the game that they borrowed for this. They just shitted them up with the 2D graphics. Like it would have been lovely if they'd retained like if they'd got the graphics from each game and kind of represented them. I know that's just like way too much work to do, but yeah, I mean I would have been over the moon to have seen Trident Castle in Dragon Quest 11 graphics. That would have been incredible, but too much to ask, so they made it all shit instead. Right, now we're on to Dragon Quest Nine, one of my other childhood favourites, so hopefully I don't fucking ruin this as well, but... Ah, uh, yeah. The observatory theme is a beautiful one, but in 2D it's rather shit. There is Yggdrasil, or Dragon Quest Nine's Yggdrasil anyway. And that is, in this game, Dragon Quest, um... Oh, it's Aquila. Yggdrasil is, um, Celestia in this, um, Dragon Quest Nine. Something very different in, uh, Dragon Quest Eleven, but... That is something we shall soon see. Right, we've been sent to a grotto. 
Here we are in Ruby Path of Doom. And I'm pretty sure I remember this one. Because they did quite a good job with this one, but... I think it's all about a treasure map, which is supposedly all Metal King Slimes, which was a possible thing in um, Dragon Quest Grotto maps. It's like a rare glitch, I think. Because I remember having one that had no enemies on one particular floor. And I remember reading about... I never had any, but there was somewhere it was only Metal King Slimes. But this is one of those grottos, apparently. Let's give it an explore. And this theme does want to make me play DQ9 again. Do love it. Even in this shitty 2D MIDI form. Do still love it. Now I must say, this is the first one of these quests that I'm actually quite enjoying. Because this is kind of... This is a classic grow. I do quite like this. Just give me Boduric Gross. That's for... Oh, okay. I thought that was going to be for something else in Dragon Quest IX. I thought that was the Batarog reference, but no. It's a different game, apparently, which I have no concept of. Back with the DQ9 playthrough, we were going through trying to find Sainted Somers and A Gates of Evolution and all that. Or trying to make them, anyway. It's bringing it all back to me. Oh, hello. What the fuck is this? Dear Doomsday Dragon. Is this what we were actually here to fight, or is this just a coincidence? I don't really remember. Oh, okay, that's the... Right, so that's the Aquila quest done. We still need to go in deeper for this quest. This looks like the... Oh, we didn't get this in Dragon Quest Land. The kind of waterfall effect, but there is, I think, the king of all Metal King Slimes. It's not... I don't think this is actually a Dragon Quest 9 thing. I think this is just up with the quest, but... Right, do we do normal slime killing tactics? I don't really know. And it's dead. <laughs> Two hits and it's dead. Oh, well. At least we got... Well, I was going to say, we got XP, but we're all level 99 to done that anyway. Right, we're done. I like this reference as well. Some Metal King Slime fused together, intent on taking revenge on all the adventurers who have ever persecuted them for their experience. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it checks out. And Dragon Quest 3 is now done. Oh, wonderful. I remember this one now. I'm pretty sure you have to marry one of your party members here. Well, I'm playing the role of the groom. And I think we get to choose now. We... Okay, there's some dodgy choices here. We're not going to do this one. No. <laughs> Well, that sounds like quite a sweet one, picking Serena. Could pick Sylvando. Okay, that one looks quite nice. Could pick Hendrick, who... <laughs> you require my assistance. <laughs> could pick Jade. Mm. We could pick Rat. <laughs> oh dear, no, I don't want to... Don't know about that one. Could do Eric. See, again, in the only previous time I've done this before, I have picked Jade, because I always pick Jade. But I think Serena seems like the sweetest option here. I think we're good. Oh, she, she's very happy about it. Oh, that's lovely, that. Wow. Serena giving away her true feelings in this. Like, I, really, I should be paying attention to some of the dialogue in these scenes, because they are quite interesting. Oh, I think that's literally... Is that literally all we get? We don't actually see a wedding scene, though. No, I don't think we do. Uh, oh, well. Dragon Quest VI, Donzo. Oh, here we go. Classic. Finally back in the quest as rest. Right, Erin. Right, Patty. Dragon Quest V, Donzo. Dragon Quest II, Donzo. There it is. I, the advice for this quest is so stupid as well, because it says go to the place where it's knightly and chivalry, which is Puerto Valor. But the answer is in Galopolis. It's just stupid. Dragon Quest 9, done though. It's fucking Baramos's castle again, isn't it? Fucking hell. Dragon Quest 10, done though. Here we go. I still can't actually work out where to go to do the Dragon Quest 8 quest, but there we go. You can see Angelo and Yanga's chatting on the other side. Lovely little reference. Oh, here we go. We do actually get the personality test then. You think Percy would make a good name? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> Yes, of course. Yeah, you are mighty and magnificent, yes. Say anything cat-related, you win. Well, we get Jessica and... Hey? Something has gone terribly wrong. This is Rosalind. Now we need to write... Off. I hate the fact that quests just send you places. Like, it's just sort of a... Quests should be about the dialogue and a little bit of story in addition. They're just sending you on errands. And it's just annoying. I, the, to be honest, I've done all of the other Dragon Quest XI quests in one playthrough. I'll be honest, I'm not going to do them again in this one. But I think a lot of them are along those lines as well. And it is just annoying. I remember this one. Hell, I think basically Jessica's personality is broken. And I think she is Medea here. 
maybe? I, I can't remember who else in Dragon Quest 8 goes tee hee hee. <laughs> don't think Medea does, but it's the only one that I can actually think that matches there. Right, so I should read it again, and ah, uh, she's turned into yoga, so oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, right, we go again. Here we are. No, I think we've got the right book. No, not that one. Yes, that one. And... There we go. Back to normal, I think. And Dragon Quest VIII, Dunzo. And there we go, at last, Dragon Quest One is Dunzo as well. So I'm sort of going to have to pretend that we haven't just beaten Kalasmos, <laughs> and we're going to do that properly next episode. Also going to have to pretend that I haven't done this next section already yesterday, only to then realise that my microphone wasn't recording at all for any of it. So <laughs> I'm going to try and act surprised <laughs> when we see the next bits. I mean, I've done this in a previous playthrough already, but... Right, let's go up. At least this bit isn't too laborious. But this bit is actually quite enjoyable, I think. Right, let's go to the Hall of Remembrance in whatever that was of the Elusive Age. So this is finally the Dragon Quest XI book we're in now. And this place already is actually quite cool. I mean, I would love to see this place in 3D more than anything, but here we go. And it's... Ooh, we've got three bosses. I wonder who they could be. So we've got Lord Dragon, representing Dragonlord from DQ1. Wormulroth representing Malroth from DQ2, and then Zomaiden representing Zoma from DQ3. So we have alternate forms of the first three final bosses of the Dragon Quest series. And we're fighting all three of them at once by the looks of it. So this is the MIDI version of the Mordigan theme, I think? This is the first... yeah, it's the first Mordigan theme, isn't it? Rather than the second one. Right, what are we doing? Um, I think first turn just to Giga Gash with me, Eric device ready to boomerang the hell out of them. So we'll find out for Eric and Veronica Chanmanga. We'll go with that. There's my attack in. Well, see, the Luminary just doesn't do much damage compared to Eric or Veronica. Alright, that's a bounce. Okay, right. Oh, that means I just can't use Veronica now. No. <laughs> what do we do now then? <laughs> That's my whole tactic out the window. Um, I guess just have a use Kafrizzle on the other two and then wait for that bounce to wear off. Alright, Eric, let's switch into boomerangs. Oh, that tactic worked so well yesterday. It went smoothly. This went perfectly. Right, Eric doubled down. That's absolutely fine. Now, here's where I would ladies first to Veronica as well, but... Gold Rush or... I think it's a Gold Rush. Veronica spells Kafrizzle on one of the other two, not Wormulroth. Go for Dragon. Alright, that should do plenty at least. Okay, one's down already. Okay. Well, that means I can use Magic Burst now. Okay, lovely. There was no problem at all, as it turned out. I swear this doesn't actually do much damage. That's barely anything, isn't it? Compared to Kaboomal, which hits everyone for much more. Frizzle was just fairly pointless. Didn't see what that was. That that wasn't disruptive, wave, was it? Right, we finished this turn. <laughs> Maybe. Oh yeah, we get to. Right, I always forget the order of this. I think Sylvando is faster. No, Sylvando is slower than Veronica. So we'll do Magic Burst first because that will go second, and then this is a Kaboom. Right, there's the double down. Oh, we must have been thingy disrupted. I don't even see it. Okay, good. Kaboom went first. 180. Is that it? Must have a magic barrier or something. Right, there's the magic burst. Will we get the... Yes, we do. Beautiful. The first fight is down. Go on, show me my rewards. It is a rainbow drop. I've got no idea what this is. I did try and find it in my items yesterday. Oh, sorry, I'm pretending I haven't done this already, haven't I? <laughs> I can't know, don't really know what it is. I'll try and find it in the items now. Because I'm pretty sure these are pretty high-end items. Like, given that you can't even come here unless you've done Kalasmos already. Uh, I mean, it's in there somewhere. Oh, I think I'll find it much easier if we're in the... Well, once we're back in the 3D world. But I think those items are actually very good. Right, now we're going to move on to the second one. So there's going to be sort of four of these. Hall of Remembrance level two. 
And given that we fought the first three bosses of the Dragon Quest series in the first fight, I think it's quite clear that we are going to fight variants of the next three. So final bosses of four, five, and six. You can see Sorrow in the middle straight away. Sarroid this time from Dicky 4, and Ninclops, i.e. Nimzo from Dicky 5, and then Mortimer M -M 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 Moth, or something like that, of Mortimer and Dicky 6. So here we go, final bosses 4, 5, and 6. I think this might be the only theme in which I think the 2D version improves upon the um, actual soundtrack, because I don't like this one at all, the 3D version. I think it's one of the worst final boss themes in the series. I mean, I think the same way about a lot of the tracks in DQ11, but this isn't bad. If you heard this in an early Dragon Quest game, you probably wouldn't mind it, I don't think. Uh, yep, yeah, for Eric, and then Shannon Lango. We'll go with the same tactics. I think this is a fight I struggled with more yesterday. Oh, sorry, I mean, I haven't got this in years. Let's see how this one goes. I think there's just a lot of damage to be absorbed. Yeah, there you go. Oh, we're sapped as well. Uh, I'm very low. Already? Uh, <laughs> just about survived. Well, that has to be an Omni Hill then. Eric's oomph down divided, so this is a double down. Sylvando, Lady's first to Veronica. And I think we will do two Kaboomals this time. Before we do a Magic Burst, just in case we don't get them all. Alright, Eric should do huge damage here. They're all more susceptible, not that we're using any status moves anyway. There's the first Kaboom. Didn't take any out here? I mean, I'd like to. Okay, with the Omni Hills in, so that's good. Oh, there's the second Kaboom. Have you taken any out? No, they're all still up. Right, next time we'll do a Magic Burst in that case. We'll do one Kaboom and then a Magic Burst. In that case, I might not divide again with Eric. Right, that's got to be an Omni Hill. I'm just going to double down again. Ladies first. So this one's the Magic Burst, because that will go second. And then this one will go before, and that one's Kaboom. Right. Fingers crossed we get him, dude. Right, we've got Ninklops. There's the hill. And there's the first Magic Burst. And there's the Magic Burst. I think we should have me already. This went much smoother than it did yesterday. We got him! Beautiful! That was pitch perfect, I must say. Right, treasure chest. A war drum. I'm pretty sure that is the item that is like the Timbrel Attention in DQ8. I think that raises everyone's attack by... Oh, it's got to be one level, isn't it? It can't be two levels, surely. It's not an ultimate greedy. But I will explore these items in... I mean, maybe in the next episode, when we do the final boss, we shall have a little play with items. We'll showboat <laughs> against the Kalasmos once we get to him. We're going to do both of his forms in that episode, just for the fun. Right. We are now on Hall of Remembrance level 3. So we've beaten the final bosses 1 through 6. This is level 3, so it must be surely the final bosses of 7, 8 and 9. Make sure everyone's on full health. I think it heals you anyway. Yeah. So 7, 8, and 9. But there's only two. So it must be final boss of 7. All right, there's Hoopthorn. So a member of Rapthorn's going from DQ8. And then Orgadelotl, servant of Orgadamir from DQ7. Final boss. Pretty sure when I did play through 7, Orgadem is He is both the midway boss and the final boss. So I think it just turns out he wasn't dead the first time. <laughs> I don't like that game. But there we go. I don't think I ever actually got to his full final form. I think I beat him the first time. And then once it turned out he was not dead at all, I was just like, fuck, this stupid game. Right, normal tactics. It worked very well last time. Eight damage from that one. Oh, Eric's asleep. Right, okay. So we can either... I think we leave him lying here. We could sobering slap, but I don't think that's a good use of the turn. So I think we'll just ladies first and two kaboomals. First turn, there's the second. Yeah, so he's lost his doppelgangers, so waiting the turn. 
could have prevented that. Oh, lovely, we've got an echo. That makes up for Eric's turn, to be honest. Could have prevented that by farming loads of Catholican runes. So I need to go and steal... It's those red stump creatures in the first forest. Just steal them from them. I think you need three per charm. You've got eight party members and they need three redwoods each. I don't even know what number that is. It's a very large number. Right. Um, okay, I think we go for the finish, not this turn, but the next. So we'll do two Kaboomals here. And then next turn, it's a divided double down plus the magic burst. And I think we get. So we probably could have done it this turn. Yeah, who thought to help? I'm sort of laughing at how stupid the name Hoopthorn is, but Rapthorn's not much. Oh, Veronica's confused. Right, okay. Right, in that... Oh, Eric's confused as well. Oh, maybe we don't go for it this turn. Savando's not, so Savando, I think, must sobering slap Veronica, and then she can finish the job. It's in there somewhere, isn't it? I can never... <laughs> I'm not very good at finding stuff in this 2D mode. Sobering slap there is on Veronica. Oh, Eric's killed himself. Right, lovely. Not lovely, bad. Right, Veronica's okay. Oh, I'm confused. Oh, they're both confused. Oh dear. <laughs> I might just have to sub nearly everyone out now. So it's, yeah, Savannah's out. Oh, we're all confused. Yeah, literally, let's just redo the whole thing. Let's get Jade. Hang on, can we not? Oh, I can't sub the first three out. Right, I mean, let's just have Jade kick the shit out of him. <laughs> And fingers crossed, I could kick the shit out of Veronica, but I'm not going to. I think he must be closed, given the close even, given the yeah, yeah, never mind. <laughs> all that worry for nothing. We got him. Everyone confused and baffled, but we got him anyway. And there we go. Oh dear. Yep, I forgot. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Yep. Hunky Vorus, servant of Corvus, final boss of DQ9. And Nelgulus of Nelgul from DQ Turn. And unfortunately, I think all of our deaths and confusions are going to carry over into this fight. I forgot that happened. Uh, no? No! I think Eric's still going to be dead. He's up Jade Outfit. Oh, he's on one health, okay. I mean, I'm going to heal anyway, to be honest, so... Are they really not confused? Or... No, they're not. So be it. Um, right, I could... I don't know who's going to be faster here, because we could just do two, or a and a Kaboom, or we could have Ferric and risk him surviving and the Omnihill going first. I think that's what we do. We do Chanlanger here and then Eric divide. So just fingers crossed the Omnihill goes first. Yeah, it does. Lovely. Risk played off. Oh, right. Okay, Veronica and Eric are still up. The other two are. Me and Savannah are down. Okay, those are the two we wanted anyway, so. Happy with that. And a divided... I think the Bumpful went in, I think. Oh, let's find out. Yeah, must have done. A beautiful, healthy 3,000 damage on the board already. Plus the Kaboom. It's nice being level 99. Okay, so we got everyone back. Same again in that case. Although, can we go for the kill this early? We might get away with it, to be honest. If we ladies first, I think we do. I think we go for it. So this one's the magic burst, and then the next one's the kaboom. And yeah, that's the kaboom. And then Eric just normal double down. I think we're going to get this here. There's the second boomerang. Everyone's still up. Oh, the magic burst has gone first. Right, that is unfortunate. And they're both still up, so that is a big problem. So the Kamuvel doesn't land because it went second. Right, obviously we need to sub before I go out, and that's a disruptive wave. Okay. Right, we sub for Ronica out for Jade. Could equally do Hendrick, but I think... I'm liking the vibe of Jade at the moment. I think Savannah and Jade make a good team, because obviously ladies first. Just always works. Right, this... I think Umph will Jade in that case have her kick the shit out of someone. We try and finish one of them off. Let's go for Nelgulus. 
Right, Eric is not oomphed at this point, so let's have him double down, uh, divide this turn, and then oomph him next turn. They must be pretty close anyway. No, they're not as close as I thought. Oh, Eric's mesmerised, lovely. Right, that's annoying. Well, at least we can rely on Jade. Is he still... Yeah, he's still beguiled. Right, that's just going to be... I'm running out of MP quite quickly. But I think we go for it. Right, we ladies first to Jade and we get two multi-feats in here. Oh dear, Eric's attacked us. Right, surely he must die here. If not the first, then the second must get him, surely. Really? Still alive? Did they, like, do a full heal or something? Right, so we've all disrupted again. Ah, it's just Sylvando that gets a turn. Oh, he can't really do anything, because <laughs> he can... Loads of first to Jade, but she's not going to get a turn. What's everyone's health stand? Are we all at more or less full health? Sort of. So maybe just a gold rush and hope that takes one of them out, at least. No, they're both... Oh, Eric takes that damage. Right, that was a bad choice. Then. And Eric's dead. Oh, I'm dead as well. Uh, right, we need Serena in. Oh, dear. I promise this went much more smoothly yesterday. Oh, and everyone else is... Oh, shit. Oh, Jade's down as well. Is Sylvana going to die here? No, okay. Right. What? <laughs> okay, yes, he does. <laughs> Right, I... This is not going well. Um, right, we're going to try and revive someone here, because Serena's and Hendrix are at full health. I think we try and revive me. In which case, let's sub me out for Rab, because we might as well. At least we'll get some damage in here. I think we do a quick crackle. I think that's going to be the most. Hendrix Unbridled Blade on Nelgulus. And then Kazing me. Crackle. Lovely. Right, we got one at least. We should have gone for the other guy first, doesn't it? Alright, we got him. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Such a quick turnaround from just a complete comeback. Well, there we go. We get a Godbird Scepter and a Crimson Cat Suit. I remember the... I can't remember what the Godbird Scepter does. I'm going to have to play with these items in the next episode. <laughs> Such a turnaround from like utter disaster to... Oh, they're both dead in this one. Right, we are three for four now. So we've done all the final bosses from Dragon Quest 1 to 10. And now we're going to have this Time Realms equivalent of the final boss of DQ11, I think. Right, we go in with normal strategies, I think. So let's play with the lineup. We want me, then. Is it Silvano next? No, Eric next. Jim might as well put Silvano first because he's a bit tankier than Eric. Slightly, anyway. And we're going with this a lot, and it's deepest recesses of the past. So that implies this is Dragon Quest Zero, <laughs> rather than DQ11. And there he is! There is the Grand Master of all things bad himself. Not Wigglytuff, no. This is the end of time. Journey is at an end, oh dear. So he's got exactly the same text as the Dark One that we saw in Act 2. And there we go. We get this theme again. Is this... Yeah, okay, this is the proper final boss theme, rather than the kind of normal Mordigan theme. Right, I'm going to jump in with a Giga Gash. We will, as normal, oomph Eric. Eric Divide. Rodko Chanananga. See how well this goes. First attack in. It's annoying the Luminary doesn't get any equivalent thing that Eric gets, where he's got the same power in both hands. So they went to work with this guy's animations. He does a lot more than any of the other bosses or monsters. Right, this has got to be an Omni Hill, Sylvando, Ladies First, Veronica. We've got two Kaboomals in here. Eric doubled down because he's oofed and divided. And another Kaboomal. Let's see how much this does. There's 1600, 2000 to the arms. Oh, and more. And then the Kaboomal. 
Another thousand left arms down. In the second turn. Oh, and another kaboom. Wonderful. Ladies first is just so good. It takes Silvando from just kind of not really having much, like a good range of kind of mid abilities to. Ah, now every woman in the party's got two turns. Brilliant. Right, um, I mean, we barely need to heal here. Oh, Silvando's dazzled, but that's fine because he's not attacking anyway. I think we go in with a Giga Gush. I think. Oh, we could go for the kill here. But I'm not going to. No, two Kaboom Walls and then a Divide again, just in case. I think we will get it, but just in case. There's the first. Should lose the other arm here, I think. Maybe with Eric's. Oh no, Eric's not Yep, we lose the other arm. Beautiful. I think he does summon him back. Alright, who's that going to be? Subundo. Pretty much fine. We just don't get that Kaboom Wall. Oh, Omni Hill. Eric's got Divide and Oomph, so we can double down. And then this is the Magic Burst, and it's just the other Kaboom that we don't get. I think we win here. God. If not, I'll sub Jaden. Okay, he's still up. We sub Jaden. In place of Veronica. I'll oh do it. Right, Eric's asleep. Okay. So Vando wakes up. Right, if we sub Jaden, we get two attacks with her. So we might as well. Because Sylvando's up. Um, everyone at full health? Okay, lovely. In that case, let's do a blade. Sylvando, ladies first to Jade, and then we get two multi feeds in. And I think we're just finishing him off here. Bad, that's 350. That's another 700 up. Yep. And another multi -feed. No, not quite. I should have emptied Jade. Oh, that's a big attack. Right, and there's the disrupt. Was anyone buffed? I don't think they were. Fine. It's almost too easy. We're going with two multi-feeds. No, you know what? We will emptied for Jade. Is Eric still asleep? Yeah, he is. Hopefully the info goes first. Oh, it does. Love it. Yeah, that was worth it. Oh, okay. It's frozen time. Oh, is that for... All oh, right, it's for everyone other than Sylvando. Okay. Oh, now ladies first. <laughs> it doesn't look so good. I think it's just got to be a gold rush, isn't it? I think that's the only thing of use you can really do. I'd love for that to be the finish. All oh, right, time is still frozen. It's just for Sylvando. As is that. Seven. If this goes on for too long, Sylvando will die. I could have him heal, but I think we just gold rush again. There's another one. He's got one more hit left in him. Could def I think we defend. Okay, it wasn't worth doing, but it was a good safety measure just in case. Right, I think Jade is a... In which case, it's two ladies first, Jade, multi feet. Oh no. Multi feet, yeah, ends up fine. And then the second one, Eric's still asleep. Oh, he's up now. We need to get Eric with a divided boomerang attack to get rid of the arms, because they are a problem. The fuck's that? Arm oh, machine gun, dear. Right, that's another disrupt. That's just the oomph, isn't it? Oh, Jed can't use abilities. Oh, she's completely useless then. Right, sub her out for Hendrik. And Hendrik can unbridle blade. Uh, do we need a heal? Realistically, yes, I think. I don't know. Sylvando, I think, oomph Hendrik. Or, no, Eric's up. We oomph Eric and then divide. And then try to kill everyone in one. Hendrik... Where's his... Unbridle blade, there it is. I think he genuinely is close. I wouldn't be surprised if Hendrik killed him, though. Really. Oh dear, that's the final flame. Oh, Hendrik hasn't finished him, but I think Eric finishes him here. I think Eric seals the deal. So I think we go in hard with everyone. Sylvando to um, Hendrik, I think. 
It's a shame that Sylvander can't, like, pass over to Hendrik, because that would be a kind of good... Not with the Giga Gush. Oh, no, with the Blade of One Pearl. Oh. It's a shame he can't pass over to Hendrik, because that would be a kind of a nice little bit in the companionship, I think. Right. I think we have him here. With a double down, I think takes them all out. There we go. We got him. Job done. So what was this bad guy's intentions? This cannot be. I'm the end of time. You're mere mortals. Oh dear, prepare to witness the end. All must die. Oh god, no! No! Please! What are we gonna do? Uh, uh. Only kidding! Wow, it was just bantering. <laughs> What an utterly stupid quest to all of this. So the whole point of this, all of the Tickington quests, and all of the bosses from Dragon Quest 1 through 10, the reskins of them, plus this guy at the end of time, it was all just for banter. It was just Brian. So, but I was testing whether or not you had to take to defeat Kalasmos. We've sort of already done it. Not that I'm telling the audience that, but... Hmm. Okay, this guy... Yeah, it's... I'm vaguely with me. Thing, but this guy's like Kalasmus' brother, or like the good equivalent of him. The friend of time. <laughs> you just noticed that name. That's why he messed around with those books and rewrote history. It was all to test us. <sighs> Come up with that time. What a silly little creature. Qualified to take on Kalasmus. Wonderful. Like giving me a harder challenge than Kalasmus. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Good, it binds us all together. What a wonderful little speech from an utterly stupid thing. I'd love to see this guy in 3D, because his thing looks very cool. It's like a god topple. Goodbye and good luck. We are job done in all of Tickington, I think. The only thing that remains to do is say goodbye to these guys, I think. Because we're never coming back to Tickington again. I think with that we have completed the Dragon Quest XI book. We've now completed 1 through 11. Just thinking, I suppose the Dragon Quest IX equivalent of all of Tickington is the legacy bosses. I think I much prefer the legacy bosses as post game content goes and throwbacks to the previous games. We have an awful lot to do. Well, there isn't much left to do, to be honest. We've got... I think I've decided that I'm not really going to do all the quests in this playthrough, nor am I going to go for a 100% defeated monster list. Because it's kind of just hunting this. There's no skill in it, really. It's just kind of ticking off boxes. So the only things we've got left are Kalasmos himself, the Dark One, and the final battle. And yeah, just to rub it in, I mean, he says the same thing again. You can't get behind it. There is no content behind it. It's just frustrating. <laughs> I think when I first did this I didn't know that and I did all of Tickington with the intention of seeing what was behind there and you can't get behind there. There's just a mystery red topple that says nothing. So the final thing for this episode is to head outside and see what happens. Cetaceous voice echoes from afar. Since something sinister far to the northwest, not where Kalasmos is, something else. And what it's done as well as we know it find itself in grave peril. I'm back and I'll take you there. Oh dear! Another great peril. Right, ladies and gentlemen, there are two episodes left. And in the next one, we will take on the Dark One himself, Kalasmos. And I will see you then. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed. And peace.